Influencer marketing is really a subset of content marketing. So if we imagine that content is king, when content is created, what are the methods to disseminate that content to a particular audience? So influencer marketing is really the ability of engaging digital celebrities and personalities to share branded content with their audience and then have a discussion about it. We know that bloggers out there are normally associated with a particular category, whether that's fitness, whether that's photography, um, whether it's the latest in the celebrity world, there's normally an angle that they, they are known for. So there's an opportunity for brands to be able to reach that audience, which they might see as a proxy for someone that would be interested in their product or service. But to answer your question, can influence be, influence be bought? I think the answer is no. I think where, where uh, monetary exchange happens with influencers and brands is because it's paying for that, that accessibility to a particular audience. In much the same way that a newspaper or a, a TV channel would be able to sell advertising in the paper or on its, on its station to reach the audience that reads or watches that particular um, programming. The fast way, but not the most effective way to find an influencer is to think who's the celebrity that would be associated with that, uh, that particular audience or, or that sector. So finding an influencer is, is actually a lot easier than that, but often um, the name of that influencer would seem strange because they're not a real life celebrity, but online they effectively are a digital celebrity because they're known for their content and uh, for their opinions, which their particular audience respects. So one of the tools that, um, that we, we obviously support is webfluential.com and, and we have a library of thousands of influencers who've all linked their social and native channels. We have algorithms which score them and base that scoring on how engaged their audience is with the content that they share and then be able to give them an influence score. So brands can then find for a particular category looking to reach a particular demographic within a specific country anywhere in the world, uh, the system will come up with a number of particular influences for that. I think in this space where, where branded content or advertorial or editorial is being created and then being shared, I think brands are kind of learning their lesson um, on the internet for, for the two-way communication that happens. For a long time brands have been able to get away with a lot by producing a, um, a TV ad, a radio ad or, or print publication where the message gets sent through to the audience but there's no opportunity to then engage with, with that audience. So brands have to put a lot more trust in the fact that they believe in their product and um, and obviously test the market. So not everybody's gonna love it. I know that every brand imagines that everybody will love their product, but it's an opportunity now online to have that discussion. So I think the brands that are sort of at the forefront of understanding that their consumer cares about their brand and they wanna have an opinion about it, um, we're seeing a move towards uh, those sort of campaigns happening, but also trusting that the influencer and that audience can have a reasonable and open conversation about it. So we are seeing a move. I think the, the, the wave is still coming. Um, and it's sort of your, your top tier motoring insurance, FMCG type of brands that are, that are leading the way. And I think in time we'll get a lot more marketers sort of saying that this is kind of a, a staple within a, um, a particular campaign in terms of its dissemination tactics.